I am Lynn Roth, the VFW Programs Director. Our master of ceremonies for this evening is a comrade you all know. Please join me in welcoming a great veterans advocate and our junior vice commander in chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Hal Roche. Good evening, welcome to the 18th annual VFW and Auxiliary Parade of Winners, featuring our Voice of Democracy and Patriot Pen winners. Tonight, I have the privilege of being the Masters of Ceremony for this exciting event. The hosts for this evening are our Commander-in-Chief, B.J. Lawrence, our National President, Sandy Creevel. As we honor these outstanding men and women who have advanced to the highest level possible in our Voice of Democracy and Patriot Pen contest. At this time, I would ask everyone to please stand as I call upon our national chaplain, Charlene Cobb, for our invocation, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Uncover. Oh God, we pray to you that we may hold our liberty in high esteem. We thank you for this wonderful country in which we are privileged to live. Inspire us to hold sacred this glorious heritage. We invoke your blessings, O oh God, on these young men and women that we are honoring this evening. Grant them the vision to see beyond today and to build for the future. Give joy to their hearts, understanding to their minds, courage and re resoluteness to their wills that they may be guided throughout life's journey to pursue that which is right and just. Make us all truly instruments of your will as we serve you. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Cover. Ladies and gentlemen, would you face the flag of the United States and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance followed by our national anthem. Praise and hope. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Before these young men and women are presented, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our distinguished guest seated here on the stage. First, a man whose dedication and service to our great country that ultimately resulted in selection to lead this great organization, a position that he fulfills with dignity, humility, integrity, and courage. The Chief's theme, Make It Happen, has renewed our commitment and focused our organization as we continue into this new millennium. From serving our country in the United States Army in Korea, to the esteem office he holds today. His thoughtfulness, 
and determination have inspired us as we continue to service our country through membership in the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. It is indeed a high honor and a distinct privilege for me to introduce Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, B.J. Lawrence and his wife Mary, who is seated in the audience. We can do it is more than just a slogan selected for our VFW auxiliary this year. To the more than 470,000 auxiliary members, it represents the heart of their commitment to veterans and the nation they love. We are pleased to have us with us tonight the lady who selected that theme and has led our wonderful VFW auxiliary since July. It is my pleasure to present to you the National President of the VFW Auxiliary, Sandy Creeble, and her husband Paul, who is seated in the audience. <laughs> seated in the audience tonight, my beautiful bride, Beth, our National VFW and Auxiliary Officers, our Council of Administration, past National Commander-in-Chiefs, past Auxiliary Presidents, would you all please stand and be recognized. Tonight, we will recognize the national winner in this 23rd annual Patriot Pen Contest and witness the final results of our annual Voice of Democracy competition. The culmination of another successful year in the Voice of Democracy program's long 72-year history. The Voice of Democracy program is sponsored jointly by the Veterans of Foreign Wars and the VFW Auxiliary and provides an exemplary opportunity for high school students to think, write, and articulate their thoughts on freedom and democracy. Why My Vote Matters was the theme for this year's Voice of Democracy program. It asked the students to reflect on their feelings about our country's future. I now ask Commander-in-Chief and National President to please come forward to center stage and prepare to welcome all of tonight's outstanding winners. Before we officially begin, I have three requests. In fairness to everyone in this large and enthusiastic crowd, we would appreciate your courteous attention to the introduction of the winners and their department officers. Please do not block or in any way interfere with the duties of our official staff photographer. Pictures are, of course, allowed and encouraged, but please take your pictures from the areas to my immediate right and left of the stage. Remember, the students, auxiliary presidents, and department commanders will be available after the program for additional pictures. I call upon past Commander-in-Chief Ed Banus to begin the processional of this year's winners. Commander-in-Chief, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, the first place National Patriots pen winner from the Department of Arizona, Daniel Rodriguez, escorted by Commander Lewis Wood and Auxiliary President Kim Harney.
And now, our National Voice of Democracy winners from the Department of Alabama, Jonathan Baker, escorted by Commander Jerry Anger and Auxiliary President Nancy Conley. From the Department of Alaska, William Deering, escorted by Commander Dave Lemlin and Junior Vice President Charlotte Maynard. From the Department of Arizona, Kyle Poland, escorted by Commander Lewis Wood and Auxiliary President Kim Harney. From the Department of Arkansas, Gentry Myers, escorted by Commander Michael Griffin and Auxiliary Member Lori Herman. From the Department of California, Sidney Clowder, <clears throat> escorted by Commander Lamont Duncan and Auxiliary President Ellie Mello. From the Department of Colorado, Hannah Karg, escorted by Commander Steve Shawnass and Auxiliary President Shelley Shellman. From the Department of Connecticut, Jacqueline Yorker, escorted by Commander Jim Delancey and Auxiliary President Laura Allen. From the Department of Delaware, 
Stefan Venable, escorted by Commander William Ricards and Auxiliary President Margot Ellers. From the Department of Europe, Owen Orovetz, escorted by Commander David Morgan. From the Department of Florida, Cassandra James, escorted by Commander Daniel Anderson and Auxiliary President Linda Seller. From the Department of Georgia, Malachi Williams, escorted by Commander Charles Dobbins and Auxiliary President Diane Ryan. From the Department of Hawaii, Taya Daniel, escorted by Commander Maria Va'a y Fargo and Auxiliary President Miriam Fernandez. And from the Department of Idaho, Reagan Yamauchi, escorted by Commander Rocky Davis and Auxiliary Member Shirley Davis. From the Department of Illinois, Colin Sexton, escorted by Commander Donald Boyer and Auxiliary President Susan Parrish. From the Department of Indiana, Isaac Bach, escorted by Commander Eric Billman and Auxiliary President Cheryl Dillard.
from the Department of Iowa, Evan Hagen, escorted by Commander Carol Whitmore and 5th District Auxiliary President Jan Saffel. From the Department of Kansas, Elisa Troyer, escorted by Commander Patrick Briggs and Auxiliary President Christy Mead. From the Department of Kentucky, Natalie Warren, escorted by Commander Robert Doherty and Auxiliary President Veronica Shanks. From the Department of Louisiana, Cameron Tasman, escorted by Commander Matthew West and Auxiliary President Colleen Herndon. From the Department of Maine, Emily Smith, escorted by Commander Christopher Armstrong and Auxiliary President Pamela Jerome. From the Department of Maryland, Ryan McDowell, escorted by Commander Denise Perry and Auxiliary President Dr. Joyce Thomas. From the Department of Massachusetts, Matthew Tibbetts, escorted by Commander Keith Jackson and Auxiliary President Sherry Grabon. From the Department of Michigan, Rachel Dahl, escorted by Commander Phil Patterson and Auxiliary President Sandra Ann Mendoz.
from the Department of Minnesota, Abigail Parker, escorted by Commander Tom Hansen and Auxiliary President Patricia Patches Pressfield. From the Department of Mississippi, Faith Houston, escorted by Commander Douglas Lee and Auxiliary President Diane Wilson. From the Department of Missouri, Jordan Stook, escorted by Commander Troy Williams and Auxiliary President Carol Ann Osterloh. From the Department of Montana, Ruby Lennard, escorted by Commander Joe Fletcher. From the Department of Nebraska, Stephanie Wright, escorted by State Adjutant Quartermaster John R. Liebsack. From the Department of Nevada, Ashby Trotter, escorted by Commander Gerald Peterson and Auxiliary President Linda Wright. From the Department of New Hampshire, Maxwell Nakos, escorted by Commander Bill Ryan and Auxiliary President Mary Jane Ryan.
from the Department of New Jersey, Andrew Dodd, escorted by Commander Dwayne Sarmiento and Auxiliary President Ellie Eath. From the Department of New Mexico, Bethany Cooksey, escorted by Commander Mark Decker and Auxiliary President Mary Sanchez. From the Department of New York, Sophia Isabella, escorted by Commander Eugene Rattagliano and Auxiliary President Darlene Stanton. From the Department of North Carolina, John Brooks, escorted by Commander Alan Payne and Auxiliary President Patricia Harris. From the Department of North Dakota, Abby Post, escorted by Commander Darcy Medicine Stone and Auxiliary President Wendy Schumacher. From the Department of Ohio, Abigail Carestas, escorted by Commander David Root and Auxiliary President Pamela Montgomery. From the Department of Oklahoma, Kinley Wilson, escorted by Commander Coral Porch and Auxiliary President Lakita McCartor. From the Department of Oregon, Dylan Liebrick, escorted by Commander Rick Higgins and Auxiliary President K. 
Kathy Lindsley. The Department of the Pacific Areas, Amaya Peryacuccio, escorted by Commander Mike Bravell. Department of Pennsylvania, Christine Troll, escorted by Commander Thomas Ace Hanzes and Auxiliary President Charlotte Swoger Lopes. Department of Rhode Island, Isabella Tobin, escorted by Commander Raymond Blanda and Auxiliary President Scott Jamison. From the Department of South Carolina, Hannah Rabin, escorted by National Commander, National Council Member Augustus Singleton, and Department Legislative Chairman Dentist Harbin. From the Department of South Dakota, Sierra Hillard, escorted by Commander Danny Frisby Griffin and Auxiliary President Mary Kirkbold. From the Department of Tennessee, Emily Bolin, escorted by Commander Michael Rue and Auxiliary President Ruby Abner Porter.
from the Department of Texas, Abed Rosby, escorted by Commander Ingborg Connolly and Auxiliary President Janie Andrea. From the Department of Utah, Shayla Hendricks, escorted by Commander Nick Flake and Auxiliary President Denise McLaughlin. From the Department of Vermont, Jennifer Tedesco, escorted by Commander Robert Colby Sr. and Auxiliary President Christine Brown. From the Department of Virginia, McKenna Christmas, escorted by Commander Ken Wiesman and Auxiliary President Patty Baskets. From the Department of Washington, Noah Hildebrand, escorted by Commander Linda Fairbank and Auxiliary President Ruth Lamoureux. From the Department of West Virginia, Robert Harris, escorted by Commander Trenton Pauley and Auxiliary President Vicki Sanford. From the Department of Wisconsin, Nicholas Kemp, escorted by Commander Gundel Metz and VFW Auxiliary President Donna Kleinmaus.
From the Department of Wyoming, Elise Rutherford, escorted by Commander Donnell Nichols and Auxiliary President Wyla Cotton. And from Panama, Jake Ingle, escorted by VFW Adjutant General Kevin Jones and past National Auxiliary President Ann Pantelikis. Ladies and gentlemen, and our contestants, it is again an honor and a privilege for me to call upon and to introduce to you the Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, B.J. Lawrence, and the National President of the VFW Auxiliary, Sandy Creeble. Thank you, thank you, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's not on the script. Go ahead. We take great pride in knowing that our Voice of Democracy program has now completed its 72nd year. Under our joint sponsorship, the program has continued to prosper the Voice of Democracy program now awards 65 national scholarships for a total of $154,000. It is time to announce this year's full list of national winners. But first, I have a special announcement. With us this evening, our representatives from our new Voice of Democracy program supporter, Dell Computers. <laughs> this evening, we're joined by Kelsey Parks, Senior Strategic Account Manager, and Aaron Wiseman, Senior Manager of Business Development. In partnership with Dell, I'm happy to announce that the VFW is providing each of our winners this evening with a new Dell lap laptop following this evening's events. Thank you so much, Dell, for your generosity, and I'm sure our students will enjoy them. Sandy and I now request the VFW National Programs Committee Chairman, Tim Borland, and the National VFW Auxiliary Scholarships Ambassador, Chrissy Harlan, to please come forward to announce this year's National Scholarship recipients.
The program competition now provides 65 scholarships for the 53 department winners. The following national scholarships are all $1,000 scholarships. These awards will be now announced by name of the scholarship. Please note that these $1,000 scholarships are announced in random order. I ask each student to come forward as they are announced for a photo with the Commander-in-Chief and National President. They will be given a citation to hold for the photo. The Mr. and Mrs. John Bajeski and the 2015 Homecoming Committee Scholarship, Pennsylvania, is awarded to Jacqueline Yorker, Department of Connecticut. The Commander-in-Chief, Richard L. Eubank, and 2010-2011 Department Commander's Scholarship, California, is awarded to Amaya Pororuccio from the Department of the Pacific Areas. The Department of Mississippi, Toxie K. Stapleton, post 60, 6473, Luther J. Cox Memorial Scholarship, is awarded to Cameron Passman, Department of Louisiana. The Department of Tennessee Cooper T. Holt John Fergus Scholarship is awarded to Jonathan Baker, Department of Alabama. The Ray Sisk Memorial Scholarship, California, is awarded to Abby Post, Department of North Dakota. The Department of Mississippi VFW Auxiliary Bernard McClelland Memorial Scholarship is awarded to John Brooks, Department of North Carolina. The Department of Idaho and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Evan Hagen, Department of Iowa. The Department of Hawaii and its Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Tia Daniel, Department of Hawaii. Yes. 
the Department of Florida John M. Jack Carney Scholarship is awarded to Elise Rutherford, Department of Wyoming. The Department of Nevada and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Nicholas Kemp, Department of Wisconsin. The Department of Kansas and Auxiliary Robert R. Whipple Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Robert Harris, Department of West Virginia. The Gilbert N. Nelson Post 1326 and their auxiliary Bismarck North Dakota Scholarship is awarded to Matthew Tibbetts, Department of Massachusetts. The Department of Maine Scholarship to remember the USS Maine is awarded to Natalie Warren, Department of Kentucky. The Department of Pennsylvania, Joseph L. Vucidis Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Ruby Leonard, Department of Montana. The Arthur W. Jones VFW Post 7564 and Auxiliary Scholarship, North Dakota, is awarded to Emily Bolin, Department of Tennessee. The Royal Chandler VFW Post 762 and Auxiliary Scholarship North Dakota is awarded to Jake Engel from Panama. The Department of Wyoming and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Shayla Hendricks, Department of Utah. The $1,500 Department of Arkansas and its auxiliary Les Stone Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Gentry Myers, Department of Arkansas. The 1500 Department of Colorado and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Malachi Williams, Department of Georgia.
The $1,500 Department of Massachusetts Edward A. Nardi Scholarship is awarded to McKenna Christmas, Department of Virginia. The $1,500 Department of New Mexico and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Owen Oravets, Department of Europe. The $1,500 Department of Missouri and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Bethany Cooksey, Department of New Mexico. The $1,500 Department of Illinois and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Isabella Tobin, Department of Rhode Island. The $1,500 Department of New Hampshire Scholarship is awarded to Sydney Codler, Department of California. The $1,000 Fridley VFW Post 363 and Auxiliary Scholarship from Minnesota and the $1,000 Department of Michigan and Auxiliary Scholarship for a total of $2,000 are awarded to Abigail Parker, Department of Minnesota. The $1,000 Juanita Crow DeBino Department of Tennessee Scholarship and the $1,000 Irvin and Lorraine Rothenbuehler Scholarship Maryland totaling $2,000 is awarded to Emily Smith Department of Maine. The $1,000 All-American Post 284 Scholarship and the $1,000 Bernard J. Michaels Post 9610 and Auxiliary Scholarship from Florida, totaling $2,000, is awarded to Hannah Rayburn, Department of South Carolina. The $1,000 Larry R. Rivers Scholarship, Louisiana, and the $1,000 Department of Illinois Scott Post 4183 Scholarship, totaling $2,000, is awarded to Dylan Liebrick, Department of Oregon. The $1,000 Department of Connecticut and Auxiliary Scholarship and the $1,000 Stephen and Elsie Riordan Memorial Scholarship from New Jersey 
totaling $2,000, are awarded to Maxwell Caicos, Department of New Hampshire. The $1,000 Department of Georgia R.D. Bulldog Smith Junior Scholarship and the $1,000 Department of Ohio Chester J. Cook Memorial Scholarship totaling $2,000 are awarded to Faith Houston Department of Mississippi. The $1,000 Department of Alabama Scholarship and the $1,000 Department of Georgia James H. Sloppy Floyd Memorial Scholarship, totaling $2,000, are awarded to Stephanie Wright, Department of Nebraska. The $1,000 Mr. and Mrs. James H. Black Scholarship, North Carolina, and the $1,000 Jane Young Memorial Scholarship, Ohio, totaling $2,000, is awarded to Colin Sexton, Department of Illinois. The $1,000 Walter and Doris Marshall Memorial Scholarship, Montana, and the $1,000 Southern Conference Scholarship, totaling $2,000, are awarded to William Deering, Department of Alaska. The $1,000 Francis Tallman Memorial Scholarship and the $1,000 Robert A. Stock Memorial Scholarship, New York, totaling $2,000, is awarded to Hannah Karg, Department of Colorado. The $2,000 Department of Kentucky and Auxiliary Brian Duffy and Marion Watson Scholarship is awarded to Reagan Yamuchi, Department of Idaho. The $2,000 Department of Wisconsin, Wally Hogan, Tom Tradewell, Commanders in Chief Scholarship is awarded to Abed Razvi, Department of Texas. The $2,000 Department of Illinois VFW Ray Soden George Kramer Scholarship is awarded to Stephen Venable, Department of Delaware. The $2,000 Department of California and Auxiliary Scholarship is awarded to Jodane Stuke, 
Department of Missouri. The $2,000 Department of Arizona and Auxiliary Harry A. Kosh Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Kenley Wilson, Department of Oklahoma. The $2,000 Silver Spring Memorial Post 2562 Scholarship, Maryland, is awarded to Sophia Isabella, Department of New York. The $2,000 Jesse A. Lewis Memorial Scholarship Award, California, is awarded to Sierra Hillard, Department of South Dakota. The $2,500 Troy and Sandy Rothbart Memorial Scholarship, New York, is awarded to Abigail Carestis, Department of Ohio. The $2,500 Daniel Sean Wallace Memorial Scholarship, New Jersey, is awarded to Alyssa Troyer, Department of Kansas. The $3,000 Joseph and Irene Hansen Memorial Scholarship, Maryland, is awarded to Cassandra James, Department of Florida. The $3,500 Department of New York and Auxiliary Reverend Albert G. Solomon Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Rachel Dahl, Department of Michigan. The $4,000 Department of Minnesota, William F. Hansley Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Ryan McDowell, Department of Maryland. The $3,000 Department of Indiana and Auxiliary Scholarship and the $1,000 Department of New Jersey Howard E. Vanderkloot Memorial Scholarship totaling $4,000 is awarded to Ashby Trotter, Department of Nevada.
the $5,000 Rehoboth Beach Post 7447 and Auxiliary Department of Delaware Scholarship is awarded to Noah Hillebrand, Department of Washington. The $5,000 Floyd County VFW Post 3281 New Albany, Indiana Scholarship is awarded to Jennifer Tedesco, Department of Vermont. Now, would the following department winners please come forward to center stage? Department of Arizona. <laughs> department of Indiana. Department of Pennsylvania. And the Department of New Jersey. Fourth place. The $7,000 Leroy Moorhead Memorial Scholarship, named for former heavyweight boxing champion George Foreman's late father, is awarded to Isaac Brock, Department of Indiana. Third place, $10,000 VFW scholarship is awarded to Andrew Dodd, Department of New Jersey. As the tension is building, <laughs> second place, a $16,000 Charles Kuralt Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Kyle Poland, Department of Arizona. And this next contestant looks just a little bit nervous. <laughs> First place, $30,000 VFW T.C. Selman Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Christine Troll, the Department of Pennsylvania. <laughs>
It is a VFW tradition to present our Commander-in-Chief and National President with the Voice of Democracy jacket. In addition, we are presenting each of them with a copy of a commemorative book containing the students' signed pictures along with their essays. <laughs> now, as we allow our Voice of Democracy first place winner to settle her nerves a little, I'd like to present the 2018-2019 National First Place winner of our Patriot Pen Essay Contest, to read his winning essay based on the theme, Patriot Pen, Why I Honor the American Flag, Daniel Rodriguez. Daniel is the recipient of the $5,000 North End Post 144 Paul A. Spirit Past Commander-in-Chief Award sponsored by VFW Post 2066 Nogales from the Department of Arizona. Why I honor the American flag. To me, the American flag is a symbol of peace and freedom. It is a symbol of respect, of perseverance, and of courage. An American flag waving in the wind inspires those who look upon it to feel brave and safe. I honor the American flag because it represents our freedom, patriotism, and the battles we have fought for this country. It is a symbol to many worth dying for. First, I honor the American flag because it represents our freedom. It is used at our government offices and buildings to show our allegiance to our country where our freedom is fought for in offices and courtrooms. It flies over embassies to show that this is a sanctuary and place of safety to those who are traveling or working in other countries. It is a beacon of light that leads a tired traveler home. Second. The American flag is a sign of courage and of our patriotism. It is given to those family members who have lost a loved one who has served in our armed forces. It flies over the homes of our veterans. It is draped over the coffins of those soldiers who bravely made the sacrifice of their lives for this flag, this country. It is so much more than just a flag. It is a way of life and a way of existence. It means that we are strong and that we do not give up. And even if we should die or get hurt, we are strong and will not be defeated. Third, the American flag represents the battles we fought for this country. The American flag is carried by troops, worn on uniforms and tanks, and painted on airplanes and helicopters. It is worn on badges that identify our warriors. It is a symbol that is recognized around the globe. It is a symbol that represents the liberation of millions of people who have been nearly destroyed and represents a dream that refuses to die. In conclusion, the American flag is many things, freedom, courage to fight battles, and patriotism of a people. It represents a way of life that is worth fighting for. It represents a people who are brave and refuse to give up represents a country that is filled with people who have pride and courage and will die for freedom. This is why I honor the American flag.
Great job, Dan. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Job well done. Now, to read her winning essay. <laughs> I am very pleased to present to you, representing Somerset VFW Post 554 and Auxiliary, Department of Pennsylvania, our first place Voice of Democracy winner, Christine Troll. I would like to take a quick moment um, to express how deeply humbled and grateful that I am to have the opportunity to be up here looking into hundreds of faces of patriots, my American heroes. I would like to quickly thank my parents who brought me up with a patriotic and grateful heart and God to whom all the glory is given and every veteran in this room and in America. It started out as a mundane Monday morning with the shriek of my alarm clock waking me up and dragging me off to school and work. I went through the motions lackadaisically until later that day, I looked up during my food service job to see a man missing his right arm from the elbow down. Just as he walked out the door, a lump lodged in my throat and my stomach crawled into my chest as I caught the proud golden words on his black cap, United States Marine Corps veteran. I spent the rest of that day with the veteran on my mind. He, along with every veteran, including my grandfather and uncle, sacrificed everything they had and everything they were to protect the basic human rights of every American, such as the right to religious freedom, the right to free speech, and the right to vote. However, I'm an American teenager. I'm worried about turning old enough to drive, not vote. Midterms and Inauguration Day will take place with or without my one teeny unmeaningful vote. Yet, a few days later, I found myself lost in the chapters of my AP history book on our founding fathers. Suddenly, I was in Philadelphia on September 17th, 1778, at the Constitutional Convention. I found myself surrounded by the giants of history who, from a fragile moment in our nation's birth, orchestrated in the second article of our Constitution a voting system of checks and balances guaranteeing every American citizen, not just the politically elite, the right to help decide who represents us, what issues they address, and how they spend our money. Every American citizen deserves the efficacious right and fundamental responsibility to make his or her voice and opinion heard, and that's exactly what voting grants us. To quote President Lyndon Johnson's maxim, this right to vote is the basic right without which all others are meaningless. My vote matters because my rights matter. Fast forwarding 133 years and 200 pages, I found myself in Washington, D.C. in 1920 on August 18th. After a civil war, several constitutional amendments, and risky suffragette activism, people of every race and gender gathered to celebrate the quintessential right to vote that all citizens have finally been granted. Voting identifies us as full American citizens whose opinions can influence the nation's future. Many voters feel a sense of powerlessness since the chance that their one vote will solely determine the fate of the president is very slim. 
Nonetheless, when has America ever been about the individual? We are a nation as a whole, united, indivisible house under God, and each vote makes up a brick of that house. Whether black, white, man or woman, our voices matter. My vote matters because I matter. After 13 years and seven more chapters, I landed in the company of hundreds of German citizens in the streets of Berlin on January 30th, 1933. Some were cheering exuberantly, declaring, Hail Hitler, while others seemed frozen in fear, their expressions blank and chalky. I swallowed with difficulty, knowing the millions of lives about to be lost to the horrors of war. Hitler stands as an optimal example of why pure democracies, as well as total dictatorships, lead to utter collapse. Pure democracies allow for a candidate who is willing to exploit the fears and anger of the people to gain power, just as Hitler did. Nevertheless, when Hitler took complete control without the consent of the people, disaster struck. A nation where the citizens are not allowed a fair say in their leadership always results in disintegration. With this conundrum in mind, our founding fathers created a democratic republic of the people, by the people, and for the people. My vote matters because the consequences matter. 85 years later, back in 2018, I wake up again to the shriek of my alarm. I have not seen that veteran with the black cap again, but I have encountered others, every one of whom I thank for their service and sacrifice. Each of them, as well as many of my own friends who have recently enlisted in the military, have given Americans the meaningful, extraordinary privilege to influence the future by voting for what they feel will create a more perfect union. My vote matters because their sacrifice matters. Next year, thanks to those who have fought and fallen for my freedom, my vote will be counted in the polls. And it won't just count. It will matter. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Well done, and congratulations to you and all the winners. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain at your seats until all the students have left the stage. Students, please file forward down the steps and join your respective department commander and auxiliary president. That concludes your Youth Scholarship Program for 2019. Please feel free to join your department officers in congratulating all these wonderful young students. Again, they will be available for pictures for the next 30 minutes. Thank you for joining us this evening.